Hello friends. I have an update for this uh, petition today and that is uh, a talk I had with uh, one Mr. Greg Atkinson uh, regarding Lana Performs uh, this petition where I was asking her for a <coughs> for an interview for a meeting uh, to bring these details of the petition and also bring a delegation uh, to speak with her. I did get a response from Mr. Atkinson saying that he is a constitutional uh, assistant, I think, uh, executive assistant to uh, Lana Parfum and that uh, she is uh, unavailable at the moment unfortunately to meet me uh, but uh, but he would like to give me a call if I am uh, so inclined about this so I had agreed and uh, today we had a talk he had mentioned he'll call me up at nine o'clock <coughs> and then he got a little bit sidetracked with something so he sent another message he'll call back uh, around 10 which he did and we spoke for a good 45 50 minutes I think so I asked him the purpose of this talk and he did tell me that uh, it was not something that he wanted to tell me. He wanted to hear from me uh, about this issue of the petition and what I had to say and he would uh, pass his opinion uh, to, to Lana Popham, I suppose. Huh? So I asked him if he was, uh, I asked him who he was and he uh, whether he was in the Ministry of Agriculture, whether he knew anything about glyphosate and all that. And he said, not particularly, he is uh, working in the same office, the constituency office of Lana Parfum is in Vancouver Island in Saanich. And time to time he even uh, works in Victoria uh, when asked to. And uh, now he, he would, uh, he is not an expert in the subject. So I told him the following within the time constraint. He said he had 20-30 minutes. I think we took twice, twice that much almost. Uh, I first told him that uh, glyphosate was approved by the federal government illegally, in my opinion. And why I say that is that uh, in order to uh, legally approve it, uh, the government was obliged to disclose all the safety test data and documents to the people which is how it works for everything else. Whether you buy a house or a car, you can see the safety data before you purchase it. But that's, that, that norm has been violated in the case of glyphosate. Uh, it has been approved for more than 40 years, but uh, people of Canada have never seen uh, safety documents. What they are being bombarded with uh, every now and then is a whole lot of third party opinion of who said what science research papers you can say you know so and so people in so and so country in germany and usa and here there uh, they researched the subject they saw the evidence and they concluded that it's pretty safe or it's safe up to this level and it's only unsafe at that level and so on according to me i told them none of these are proof all of these are opinions and third party opinions no matter how knowledgeable those people might be it is still third party opinion and not proof what constitutes proof, and Canadian government knows about it, is a set of data, test, uh, test records, of animals exposed uh, to glyphosate in their food, and these, uh, the health parameters of these animals measured and compared against identical set of animals living an identical lifestyle, eating identical food, but not exposed to glyphosate, and if their health parameters are all similar, that means glyphosate doesn't cause any, any particular harm. Uh, if, uh, if the health parameters of these exposed animals are actually better than those that are not having glyphosate, then you can say glyphosate is very beneficial. On the other hand, if the health parameters are worse than the other group that are not having glyphosate, you can conclude that, uh, that it is not good, not good for health, it causes this or that problem. This is the report and the supporting raw data that actually constitutes proof. Everything else is just opinion. So uh, the government of Canada has not disclosed this, uh, this uh, data uh, and how I know it is because I have a direct access to Information Act application with the government to disclose to me at least this data 
and I know that I was the first to ask this uh, information because if somebody else has asked it, the answer answer would be on the web, and I will be simply you know informed that this question has been asked before, go so and so place, and and read up the answer. But no, in my case, they had to open a fresh fresh case, so I was the first person to ask for it. And uh, now almost four years in running, they still haven't given me the data, but they have not told me that I do not have the right. They could have said that, no, you, you don't have the right. Canadian citizens don't have the right to see the safety data on glyphosate. They didn't say that. They indirectly agreed that I have the right. And yet, they're dragging their feet. For me, they dragged their feet for three or four years. And for the Canadian people, they've been dragging their feet for 40 years. Okay, so this is one. That's not all. I had a petition on change.org uh, for uh, my MP, Carla Qualtro, to take all these signatures and go to Ottawa and uh, demand uh, or hand it over to the health minister demanding that she discloses the safety documents on glyphosate. I uh, gathered 25,000 supports for that. I asked her to see me. I asked her to uh, let me bring a delegation. And she did, and I met her and brought the delegation and gave all the evidence to her. And she thought it was, you know, it was something that could only happen under uh, Harper government, but is not going to happen under a Trudeau government. So, so not to worry, she will take it uh, to Ottawa. She did that, and then she went, Mom, she wouldn't uh, discuss this subject anymore. I suspect she's been asked to shut up and not rock the boat. Uh, if there is some other reason, she is not coming clean on that. So I, I can only presume that she has been asked to shut up. And she has decided to shut up. Now, other than that, I, I raised another petition directly to the House of Commons, the, the Canadian Parliament, uh, sub, uh, sponsored by an MP, uh, NDP MP from uh, British Columbia, Mr. Finn Dallandy, for the same thing, for the parliamentarians, the lawmakers of this country, the parliament, essentially, to open this case and consider my petition uh, that uh, that it is illegal to uh, continue to approve glyphosate without disclosing their safety data. And if they agree that that is how law is supposed to work, then, then, then demand that health ministry uh, discloses the safety data to the people or if I'm wrong, to tell me in official writing that uh, Canadian people, me or the Canadian people, do not have the right to see the safety data of glyphosate, although they must consume it in their food. So <clears throat> this petition was uh, sponsored uh, and it got presented to the parliament. It had uh, lots of signatures and supports and uh, they considered it and eventually in six weeks time they gave me again a wishy-washy answer bypassing the issue altogether that was asked and saying that, oh, Health Canada is very careful and the Canadian government is very careful in assessing safety documents of, uh, of pesticides and so on and so forth. Basically, don't worry, they are, they, are, they are taking care, but they did not address the main issue that it is illegal or not illegal to approve this thing while withholding the safety data. And if it is illegal, then should they not be demanding the government discloses this to the Canadian people. So this is another proof to me that not only it has been approved illegally, that our parliament, parliamentarians, primarily these people, you know, the, 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 the people that voted to defeat uh, labeling of GMO, for instance, most of the, all the conservatives and most of the liberals, uh, are working to defeat the, and then working against the interest of the people and that's why glyphosate can continue to have a field day. But that leaves the question of NDP. Now, NDP government has been there in uh, Alberta and I, you know, you, you, you can decide for yourself whether they are doing anything to push back at this uh, toxic chemical attack on Canada, what they are doing about it. And now we have an NDP government in BC and it remains to be seen what they'll do. Uh, I did tell Mr. Atkinson that there is a, 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 a belief by many people that these political parties are, are horrible and politicians are one of the least respected professions today and that uh, many people believe it doesn't matter if NDP or liberals or whoever comes to power is just the same devil with a different lipstick. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, these two petitions didn't uh, result in any success. My direct application to the government uh, through Access to Information Act is still dragging on. We, it remains to be seen whether they'll ever uh, release the uh, safety documents. And when they are not releasing it, what is the, what would you suspect? That there is something, uh, something worth hiding. I mean, there's something really not okay, not kosher. I mean, this is what one would suspect you know and why not and uh, there are some jurisprudence to show that safety documents are really um, have have been tampered with by uh, companies like uh, monsanto and not in canada this jurisprudence uh, is is there from other countries but i'll not go into that i didn't have time to tell mr greg atkinson so much because i had a limited time uh, so then uh, i got to the next topic item number two is of uh, setting up labs to test food Mm, that also goes way back where I, uh, some years back where I realized accidentally that Canada didn't even have a lab that could test food for glyphosate. It was not publicized anywhere. So when I started inquiring about it by actually calling all the labs, I found out that none of them did that. And the reason they didn't do it is because they didn't think there was a market because nobody in Canada wanted to test food for glyphosate. So I sent a very angry letter to Rana Ambrose. She didn't respond. It caught the attention of NDP MP, then NDP MP, now retired. Alex Adamenenko, he uh, checked up and found I was correct and he uh, spoke with me on the phone. He asked me to give him a, a copy of that letter and he put a cover letter on that and walked across and gave this to Rana Ambrose by hand and demanded uh, that she answers why Canadians cannot test their food for glyphosate. Uh, net result is eventually labs uh, started coming up. They did started uh, start getting orders to test food for glyphosate. E eventually, Canada ended up, as far as I know, testing more food than any other country for glyphosate. I started, I I, sta I got that in, uh, information also from the lab managers who I had befriended by them, by them. And then I started uh, badgering the government to give me uh, under Access to Information Act all, all these uh, results. And eventually I got dumped with more than nearly 8,000 results of foods tested for glyphosate. I, I, I converted them into gigantic <coughs> spreadsheets and uh, analyzed them to find out that that uh, North American food is the most contaminated with glyphosate in the planet. And out of that, Canadians are ma marginally or measurably uh, more contaminated. Uh, Canadian foods are more contaminated than US foods and foods collected in western part of Canada is more contam contaminated than foods collected elsewhere. So we are essentially living in the epicenter of poisonous foods in the planet. I wrote a book about it with all the charts and graphs and all the data, not my own data, CFI's own data, and that's uh, uh, that I, I told him that. And uh, and then I <coughs> I started, I, I informed that uh, did CFIA also make a report? Yes, they did. I, my book is 400 pages, CFI report was two pages and they uh, didn't say something wrong as such but they just whitewashed it. They hid the truth caref in carefully selective uh, report uh, and not showing how bad Canadian food was with regard to everything else that they tested from elsewhere and also how certain kind of food, certain types of food are especially bad and uh, anyway, so I mentioned all that. Then I did not talk about my effort with municipalities and others to test food, local food and let people know how much of how much glyphosate is in this kind of bread or that kind of apple and so on because I, I, I ran out of time. But that's an, another effort that I didn't get time to, uh, to tell him about. Mm, I didn't tell him about the huge groundswell of grassroots movement that's coming up across, uh, well starting with for instance New Brunswick. Uh, I, I didn't tell him about that. I did tell him about we are in the middle of a mass extinction uh, and that uh, animals uh, exposed to glyphosate are having birth defects that are bringing them to the brink of extinction. Uh, whether he, uh, I didn't have time to elaborate on that, but I did mention wildlife scientists in Canada and US are running from pillar to post to draw attention and nobody wants to listen. Uh, I did tell him how bad British Columbian government has been uh, with regard to my two independent Freedom of Information Act requests. One of them was to the British Columbian government to show me, the previous government, Christy Clark's, uh, show me what evidence they had seen that uh, glyphosate was safe for environment uh, when they approved its use 
used by aerial spray by uh, by, by logging corporations. And uh, they responded saying that they essentially didn't say any proof because it's already approved by Ottawa. And I told Greg Atkinson that Ottawa never approved uh, application of it over the forest because it's not their business, it's a provincial government business. And although they approved uh, ag- uh, its use in agriculture up to, a, up to a point in certain ways and 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 that is safe up to uh, a certain limit, so although those limits are fictitious and not proven. Uh, so basically, British Columbia government has seen no evidence that application of glyphosate uh, spray over forest is at all safe and they are assuming it's safe. So that's one. Second, I have another case with them where I, uh, where I asked them, the British Columbia government, to give me uh, year, uh, the exact quantity uh, by mass, by weight, how many kilograms or tons uh, of this chemical has been used year upon year on British Columbian forests from the first year of application till date. And I, I got some very <laughs> interesting feedbacks. They told me they didn't know, uh, they didn't have the data with, uh, within their departments, uh, but they can ask uh, logging corporations for this data, hoping they have it, uh, because this data goes, goes back to no, several decades. And, uh, and then they can compile it uh, into a meaningful report and, and give it to me. However, this takes man hours uh, more than I'm uh, allowed to free of charge. So am I willing to pay in a couple of installments uh, something like $1,400-$500? I said, no, I'm not. Uh, I still agreed to pay 70 odd dollars uh, for them to do some amount of work. Whatever they did was beyond whatever, what I was allowed. So for 70 dollars, I got some minuscule amount of information from them uh, where hand application was done by a few use, using backpacks. Uh, that's a very small quantity and applied to local brushes and all that, but not, uh, but missing all the information of the huge amount of it that was aerial, aerially sprayed by aircraft over British Columbia um, forest. This is assuming that the logging corporation even keep the record that long. So, in other words, British Columbian government had no clue as to whether it was safe for application over the forest and no clue as to how much of it has been used already. No clue. And they wanted me to pay thousand odd dollars just to find it out. So, I told him these two things. And finally, I said that I uh, we are waiting to make an update. I don't know whether Lana Parfum uh, will uh, support it or find some way to say it's not my problem, it's somebody else's problem, uh, which is a very common reaction from uh, politicians. They'll try to get away from it and hope you don't ask this question and you know go somewhere else. <coughs> and I told him that I have this huge support base uh, of uh, through petitions and I make updates and they want to know what's going on. So I will be making an update, and I will tell them that this is what I, uh, this is what happened. Alana Popham didn't respond in herself, and uh, she did not agree to see me, uh, per se. But she asked her, uh, what do you call, executive assistant, uh, to talk to me, a person who was not involved in agriculture or pesticides, and also that. Uh, what is the next step is not known. So Greg Atkinson said he took down notes uh, while I was talking and he will uh, pass his, his, his information about it to Lana Parfum. I said, could you even uh, grasp and remember all these things because it's a heavy load of stuff I told you in a very short time. He said, yeah, he was taking notes and so on. So <clears throat> I don't know if my conversation was recorded. I forgot to ask. I did not record it myself. But I did write down jot some points that I was going to speak, and that I'm reading those uh, those points. So this is the update. Whether Greg Atkinson will tell Lana Parfum or what he will tell, I do not know. Whether it will result in any further action or nothing, I do not know. Uh, he did ask whether I had a DVD to pass to him. I said I was going to give a DVD full of information of this petition if she wanted to see me. I'm not sure if I should give it to her without she wanting to see me because I don't want DVDs to just straight go into the trash. So I wanted to know what what, what she was going to do about it first of all. The, the Seeing her was just one step. 
I know that fighting uh, glyphosate is going to be difficult because uh, it's a federally approved, but why does everything have to be easy? I asked him that. Why does everything have to be easy? I mean, many things in life are difficult and one has to do it, not just find excuses not to do it. So anyway, so this is the update. I have, like I told you, no idea whether Lana Parfum will get back, want to see, want to address this or want to sidestep it and hope this question doesn't come away. This question is not going to go away because I did tell uh, Greg Atkinson whether he helps and Lana Parfum helps or doesn't help. I am going to be at it till either I am dead by old age or too weak to, to walk, uh, too weak to work. Uh, so it's not going to go away. And I have a increasing amount of people who support me. There are even, you know, youngsters who are willing to spread this to their schools and colleges. So these are the things I told him. And then, as it happened, uh, crisscrossed, uh, and, uh, and I ended up talking to Larry Wattles also. He's, a, he's a, one of the supporters and a, he's from the constituency of uh, Lana Parfum. He apparently has spoken with Greg Atkinson before on something. And uh, we uh, were discussing all the steps that we are supposed to take apart from trying to contact Lana Parfum. Uh, one of them is to find out whether a motion can be uh, a request for a bill uh, can be passed to our legislative assembly members uh, to pass uh, to, to 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 request for a, a law to be passed uh, uh, an act to be passed to demand that uh, Ottawa discloses the safety documents on glyphosate and if Ottawa re refuses to do refuses to do so then to consider banning glyphosate in uh, British Columbian foods. I did tell him that France was uh, planning to uh, vote no against uh, re renewal of glyphosate in uh, uh, French agriculture and what's going to happen about it in EU. Nobody knows. It's thrown the matter uh, up in the air. So, <coughs> so that was one thing that we were going to do. Uh, I discussed with Larry and we are looking at uh, the ways to do it and we decided that uh, each of us will ask uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, ask some helpful MLAs if they are going to sponsor a, a, a bill or an act or a petition. Uh, apparently the petition to legislative assembly needs to be submitted by an MLA and not by a, sit a resident or a citizen. Uh, and the other is uh, to approach our own MLAs and to ask them whether they will support this uh, either petition or uh, resolution or act to be proposed uh, submitted for passing in uh, in uh, British Columbian uh, legislature legislative assembly uh, what to demand a to demand that Ottawa discloses all the hitherto safety documents and not third party opinions direct safety documents on glyphosate a if they do not do that, if Ottawa refuses to disclose it, then B, to work to act, to pass a bill, an act, to restrict and ban the presence of glyphosate in British Columbian food. I would have expanded it to the, the forestry as well, but we leave it aside uh, for now. Uh, one, it will already affect the other, I think. So, so this is something that we can ask everyone. Uh, I decided to ask two Green Party MLAs if they'll support it personally. Larry will ask uh, some others uh, who th he thinks are uh, helpful among the uh, NDP MLAs. I don't know. We'll see. And then I will also ask my own MLA, Ravi Kalon, uh, about his stand on it. And I will say that we are preparing a list of uh, MLAs that will or uh, will uh, take a stand on it and MLAs who would rather sit on the fence or or uh, just go away and, and refuse to address it. Uh, and we are making a list of that too. Uh, eventually, what, we, what uh, we will do with it, we will decide later on. So this is the, uh, the ultimate up, uh, update. I will be preparing uh, one follow-up uh, message, I think, to my MLA today. Uh, not about my talk with uh, Greg Atkinson, but on this subject uh, and uh, and ask him to respond whether he will support or not support either way. 
and I will probably also write uh, the messages to the true two Green Party MLAs and I will probably share it with people you all it's all public interesting it's nothing personal and uh, everyone needs to know we would appreciate if many of you will also take up this this task and 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 call or approach your own MLAs uh, whether it's in BC or elsewhere because politicians are not going to do it for you they will only do something when they think their political ass is on fire otherwise they'll not do anything uh, th this is common I mean this is not a particular uh, problem with BC it's, it's the world over so ultimately the most important role or most important person in a functioning democracy is you and me not the politician not the leaders it dip it's you and me who decide what kind of government we get and whether people can still be the masters of their destiny or we have a democracy gone to hell this is your and my issue not their issue they are only temporary workers four years they're there five years they're there then they're gone but you and me uh, it's, it's a lifelong issue it's it's a matter of existential threat to Canada's uh, nature and uh, health of all its animals, including humans. It's an existential threat. Take, there is no other way to say it. And you and I are in a fight to the death to either save ourselves or fail. And politicians are just kind of nonplussed messengers. If, if, there, if there is a... Uh, a threat to their career they may get up and do something if there is no threat they will not do anything this is the general practice it doesn't matter which party and all that so please consider doing something yourself don't just go and say Tony we love what you do I don't need your love I need your action we all need your action Canada cannot do without direct action of the people and people have to take control of their democracy back there is no other way to handle this menace, this 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 disaster that's happening around us. Okay, I'm more or less done with my update. I talked a little more than I should have, but well, what the hell? That's it for now. Take care, folks.